Hello again guys, it has been a very long time since I've made a quadcopter related video, so today I wanted to show you some of what I've been doing over the last while. A company called AGM Hobby reached out to me and asked if I was interested in taking a look at their AGM 250 racer kit. And as you can see here in front of me, I have built the kit. I've spent an awful lot of time over the last, let's say three weeks doing this, and really it should have only taken probably a few hours, but I am completely new to this. So first and foremost, let's just go through and talk about what came in the box, and we'll talk a little bit about the assembly process because I didn't film all of it. I filmed a decent amount. So inside of the box, you will find lots and lots and lots of stuff. It comes with four ESCs, electronic speed controllers, four motors, two clockwise, two counterclockwise, a full set of four props, and they are carbon fiber props, a CC3D flight control board, and the frame kit, the basically the shell, the part that you need to hold it all together. I also received a battery, but the kit itself does not come with that battery. You do have to provide that. And the kit that I received, as far as power, did have a Dean's connector on it, so just make sure you check that, and whatever battery you end up using, make sure it has that connector on it, or you're capable of providing some sort of power. But the battery they sent me is a 2200 milliamp hour, 11.1 volt, 3S30C battery. The frame kit that came along with it came with tons and tons of parts in it. It had, like I said, the Dean's connector for the battery plug, power distribution board so that everything could plug into it, heat shrink tubing, zip ties, and a battery strap to hold the battery onto the quad. Next up, of course, you've got the assembly process. Now, I went through this process twice because the first time I failed pretty hard. The first try through, I tried to just go ahead and assemble the entire quadcopter frame. That's not the way that you do this. So I went back through, I found some YouTube tutorials, I found a very thorough documented guide because, and this is the one real big complaint I have about this, the documentation that came with this is basically nothing. There was a small diagram, and I mean a very small diagram, included that it showed the way that the quadcopter frame fits together, but nothing else. So I had to actually find tutorials online. I will put a link down in the video description to the tutorial that helped me the most. But the second time through, following through with a guide, basically what I ended up doing is I put the ESCs, the speed controllers, on the very bottom section of the frame, zip tied those in place facing the right direction so that the wires to the motors could go out to the sides and the power motors would go straight up through the middle. And then I started assembling from the bottom up. So on that bottom frame, I attached the arms for all the motors. I put the center plate where the power distribution board was going to go and pushed all the wires up through that. I took that time to go ahead and solder all of the wires to the power distribution board, remembering that the red wires go to positive, the black wires go to negative, and it really doesn't seem to matter which ones they actually connect to as long as they're not getting in the way. I went ahead and put my power leads on the ones in the very back of the power distribution board so that the battery plug would go out the back, but you can really put it sort of wherever you want it as long as things line up. Next up, I plugged the cables coming out of the ESCs, the one with the actual plugs on them, into the CC. 3D board. The CC3D board I have has, I think, six plugs on it, and I only used four, obviously, because it's one for each motor, one for each speed controller. Next up, I wanted to attach the motors to the frame, and basically that's just putting screws into the bottom of it. And you're supposed to go ahead and connect the motors up to the speed controllers, and the problem is there wasn't really a good way to do that. What I normally would have done is something like bullet connectors, where you just plug one in here and one in here and hope that everything works. It didn't come with any of those, so I used a soldering iron and soldered them together. Not exactly a light connection, but I did it just enough so that it would make the connection and that was it. At that point, I came to the realization it did not come with a receiver. I was under the impression that the transmitter that I had from the HMX280 that I reviewed a while back, that it would actually work with this. I didn't realize that it had to have a separate receiver. I thought the open CC3D board, the, the flight controller board, was what it was actually going to talk to. I'm completely new to this, so I'm hardly blamed here. But like I said, I was completely wrong there, so I had to actually go out and order, and I picked up a FlySky transmitter. I'll put a link to all of this down in the video description. And it was a transmitter and receiver combo, and it was about 60 bucks on Amazon. Once I received that, I went ahead and plugged in all of the plugs from the CC3D board, the flight controller board, into the receiver. And then you go ahead and you plug in the battery and bind the transmitter to it. I don't have any actual footage of doing that, sorry. A lot of this stuff is all in the tutorial, which again, I'm going to link to. But after everything's bound up, you unplug the battery, you plug a USB cable into the CC3D board, open up the open pilot software on your computer, and that walks you through most of the rest of the process. Getting all of the motors set up, making sure that they're spinning in the right direction. If they're not spinning in the right direction, you reverse two wires on whatever motor it is, and then you solder them together properly. Now, you're supposed to solder them together and then use heat shrink tubing over them. I ended up not doing that. I used electrical tape because I figured that would also work and it did get the job done and to finish it up you basically just make sure everything is connected to the board and put the top section on. 
Now, there wasn't really a good way to do that. I wanted to put the OpenCC 3D board on top of the power distribution board, but there wasn't enough room between it and the top part of the frame if I did it that way. So I kind of put it up here and there wasn't anything to mount it to, so more electrical tape. And the receiver's up there, and again, more electrical tape. It's not holding together terribly well. It's getting the job done, but it's not, not the best. But after that point, once you've set it up with the OpenPilot software and you've got everything attached and you tried to make it look kind of pretty, you can put the props on. Do not put the props on while you're setting it up with OpenPilot. That is a huge, dangerous thing to do. But yeah, after doing that, just attach the battery to the top, take it outside, plug it all in, bind it to the transmitter, you're ready to fly. Now, before I go any farther, I should also mention there's this piece that fits on the top. I don't know if I even have any video of it on there, but one of the first times I took this out to fly it, this actually came off. And I've heard this from several people that these little rubber things tear for a pastime. In my case, luckily, I hit pretty hard on the nose and it ripped off, but it didn't actually do any damage to any of these, so I just have to put it all back together. But the only reason I have this on there is if you have a camera, and I don't currently have a camera mounted on it, so I don't really need it on there. So I just haven't put it back on yet. But going into how it flies, that's kind of the most important thing, right? I will say, the couple of times that I've taken this out, haven't taken it out a lot, we've had a lot of bad weather lately. It has an awful lot of power, it has an awful lot of yaw, has an awful lot of pitch, depending on how you control it. In fact, the second time I took it out and flew it, I started messing around with the knobs on the controller because I'm not entirely sure what everything does at this point. Again, still very new to this. Turned one up all the way, pitched it forward and it had so much pitch that it just put itself straight into the ground. And that's actually when this ripped off. Now I can imagine this would be a whole lot of fun to fly, but really every time that I've taken it outside and tried to fly it, something has come off, something has broken loose. Specifically, these little nuts on the props, they don't hold on terribly well. So I'm actually, I've replaced one of them so far with one from the HMX 280. And that one, it actually has a way to manually tighten it down and keep it really snug. I would also suggest self-tightening propellers if you're gonna do something like this because that way the nut can't come off, the entire prop would have to come off. And the self-tightening props go in the opposite direction so they shouldn't be coming off unless you land badly and at that point it's gonna come off one way or another. But yeah, like I said, every time that I've flown this outside, either one of the nuts has come off. Like I said, this thing came off, the camera platform. It's just, it's, it's been daunting flying it. And I know I need to do some adjustments to it. I need to balance the props to make sure that it flies a little better that way. I also need to do some sort of back and forth with the OpenPilot software because I think there's some sort of an input lag between the controller and the receiver. Because a lot of times when I'll tell it to go in one direction or the other, it, it hesitates. It's not extremely fast and responsive, and it really ought to be. It's a racing quad. So I do still need to do an awful lot of work on this thing, and that does bring me to the end of the video. Would I recommend doing something like this? The kit over on AGM Hobby is about $200. That does not include a battery, that does not include a transmitter or a receiver, and then you have to assemble it all entirely yourself, and you have to troubleshoot it, and you have to walk through the entire setup process, it is a lot of work. Would I recommend something like this? For a brand new person into quadcopters? Obviously not. As a person wanting to take that next step and learn more about it? Possibly. The one thing I can really find to equate this to is building a computer. You can go to the store and you can buy a Dell or an HP or an Alien, I don't care. There's a huge amount of computers out there in the world you can buy pre-built. And they all come one way and that is the way that you get them and that's that. Or you can build your own computer and you can build it exactly the way that you want it and get it perfectly and then when you're done with it, you're ready to, to move on. You can upgrade it or you can sell it or you can whatever. And that's one other way to do it. It's not for everyone, obviously. I've done both in the past and I've had good experiences with both. But if you're going to be building your own computer, there's a very good chance you're gonna have to tinker with it, you're gonna have to work with it, you know, you're gonna put in the processor and you're gonna do something wrong, you're gonna put the RAM in and it's not gonna get seated quite right, you may have to replace hard drives down the road, you may have to replace video cards, who knows? It's just a bit of a daunting task. The same can be said for building a quadcopter. You can go and do something like this and invest let's say 250 or 300 dollars and get a setup similar to this with receiver and battery and everything and you can have something that is upgradable something that is powerful something that will get the job done all day long or you can and be like me in this case where you you spend a lot of time a lot of energy I've actually invested quite a bit of money into this myself on top of receiving the kit itself for free. Like I said, I had to buy the receiver and transmitter. I actually had to buy a new OpenCC 3D flight controller board because I managed to completely fry the first one that came with it because I'm not very smart when it comes to electronics. So this became a bit of a money pit for me. And I spent the entire time building it and working on it and flying it, comparing it to the High Sky HMX 280, which was $167 shipped from Banggood. So for someone new to this, for someone that's interested in getting into the more racing side of it or the more sporty, really sporty side of things, would I recommend this or something like the HMX 280? 
I'm gonna recommend the HMX 280 all day long. That said, like I said, this is so upgradable, so interchangeable. Basically do your own thing, make it exactly how you want it. If you don't like these motors, switch them out. If you don't like these props, switch them out. You want three bladed instead of two bladed, you can do that. You want self tightening without the nuts on them, you can do that. Bigger battery, of course. Whereas with the pre-built, you can get what you get and that's about it. If you wanna replace the motors, you really can't most of the time. You wanna replace the battery, you've got a very limited range of options. So if you want that expandability and upgradability, build your own is definitely the way to go. Just keep in mind, it's build your own, so it's gonna look like a Frankenstein. And I think that's gonna be about all for me for today. This video's gone on a little longer than I really wanted it to. This thing has been an awful lot of fun learning and trying it out and flying it, the little bit that I've gotten to fly it. It's not gonna be a long-term flyer for me. I hate to say that, it's just not. If I'm gonna go out and fly something that's a racer, I'm gonna go ahead and fly one of the pre-built ones that I've got because I don't want to constantly have to worry about it and worry about fine tuning it and worry about parts and things flying off. I do appreciate AGM Hobby sending this out to me for review. It has been a very interesting learning experience. And like I said, I'll put links to where you can find this and of course the, the HMX 280 and the tutorial for how to build one of these down in the video description. I found it online. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to leave a thumbs up below this video if you like this video. Subscribe to receive more videos when they become available. And I'll see you again next time.